My name is Oscar Kaplun, and um, I will introduce today uh, you very shortly into Canon Automation Lift Profile Specification and Lift Profile Handling. Well, the nice picture you can see here is truly uh, existing in, uh, this is not something that we just uh, dreamed of uh, only, but it is realized, is designed in uh, main railway station in Berlin. And it has, can open communication in there. So, few words would I let about myself. I'm an electrical engineer and I'm working at Ken Automation, um, supervising uh, multiple working groups. Uh, we will talk about this later if you don't know what this means actually at Ken Automation. And especially I also supervise the lift group which design can open lift profile. So can open lift is a trademark. However, it is not a, a separate organization. It is actually a working group at can in automation. And we actually design it, but not by us. Um, the, more than 30 companies currently present and active in development of can open comp uh, lift components are participating in this working group, maintain the specification and extend for new uh, functionality in there. You could do this too, if you are not already in there. So beyond this, I do also test devices for can open conformance and also do interoperability testing at can automation. And these all things are already a decade or so. So you could imagine I have some experience. Well, um, for the content of today's webinar, I would um, give a few words in introduction about our company, what we do actually for you if you don't know about us so you get an impression uh, how we're operating what we could offer to you especially in regard of can open lift development as the next i would go into details about um, can open lift what is this uh, all about then it additional features uh, additional options, functionality is possible. And also talk about what is expected to come to uh, can open lift in the future. Well, let's get started with introduction. Canon Automation uh, was founded as the support uh, organization in the times where can uh, protocol was developed by Bosch already uh, by Robert Bosch company and was already effectively used in cars, in automotive. Uh, that was the time when um, companies and individuals from the other industrial segments found can also attractive to their application. And I said, we need some more information. How does it work and how to handle it? How, where do I get the um, hardware and the software and how to handle the protocol itself? Especially the CAN offers a possibility to support higher layer protocols. And that was exactly how do I define the data in there and that is most uh, interesting part where the most companies were interested in. And for that, they needed uh, someone who would provide this information, provide product related support. And so Kenyan Automation was founded. 
We're offering technical specification related product um, related certain products, certain device uh, devices, what is all about and promote the information, uh, promote the products of our members and product promote the technology, can based technology into the market. We do this over 25 years and collected some uh, numerous uh, information, numerous number, numbered um, knowledge, enormous knowledge, would I say, especially that is um, related to our member companies who have this knowledge are we interconnected and for you if you have not affiliate we're not affiliated with us we could offer this information and support as well you can found, find us in germany in nuremberg this is our headquarters there are no affiliates in other companies or in other countries. Can Automation's membership uh, or, uh, based organization. So this means uh, we are based on um, membership fee and membership interest into certain can based technologies. Without this interest, nothing would exist. And as you can see, over the uh, course of uh, years, our number of our members grown um, to a certain degree and um, it remains constant, which gives an um, opportunity to say that the interest to can relate to technology still is still here. We cannot actually recognize how much of it falls to can open lift, but I could just say, as I've said previously, uh, there is about 30 to 40 companies which actively, which actively develop uh, can open lift components with can open interface. Beyond that, there could be some supplier companies who do the same, but we have no knowledge of that exactly. It's just to know that um, we have um, some companies working on that and then numbers also growing, although not that steeply like uh, total number of members of Ken Automation. A briefly history that started with certain individuals and companies who joined in what I've said in the very beginning to provide this product related technical and marketing information for all interested parties to promote can based technologies uh, in various markets and support all developers, either as a system um, designers or device manufacturers with all necessary information, especially specifications. There are companies which very few number, um, few companies which offer sub, uh, uh, supply products, software and hardware based to push your development forward. They also can offer you to completely design your uh, device if you have no opportunity for that or do you want to uh, design the whole application, which as for example, can open lift does. So we have two um, separate entity in our company, can automation company, uh, which acts in certain directions. So in the first one, we have technical groups which design specifications, especially that one of can open lift, which you could see in green marked in the middle. This is IG profile. And there is um, working group can open lift. And it has additional working group for certain advanced features which are not included in the main part. Within this group, the companies come together to us and we design together and maintain 
existing specification, extend it for new features, and we also do plug fast interoperability testing of every component within the lift application. However, due to COVID-19 um, situation in the uh, past two years, would I say, at least in the uh, last year, um, that is not possible to perform this plug fest, but we hope when uh, this is all is over with the pandemic, we could continue on this interoperability testing of lift component, which is important part of the development of can open lift devices. Beyond that, there are various technical groups working in this matter. Uh, we have IG can open, um, uh, this base can open, can base high layer uh, protocol can open. Um, Robert Bosch has developed numerous further data link layers beyond CAN, is CANFT and CAN Excel. And this is reflected also with us. So we don't develop um, can FT or can Excel um, as the Bosch initially specified, but we participating in specifying this. Specifying this, this is actually a course for your interest at uh, our company. Beyond that, we um, keep up with FURVA application layers, CAN-based application layers such as uh, G9039. And we also um, have a oversee committee for working group, especially for generally safety, functional safety and security of the application and communication. All these um, committees, they include so-called SIGs and TFs, uh, which are actually the working group uh, themselves. And you can see the technical committee which oversees and um, arranges where should we go, uh, what should we specify on behalf of our members. Another thing is another um, activity we do another entity is uh, in the comp in our company is our marketing group so we have technical groups we have marketing groups so we have a, um, a committee which defines how the money of our members is actually spent and one of those is what are the activities, especially marketing activities we do on behalf of our members, such as uh, we did, or uh, well, at least now due to pandemic is restricted uh, to a certain degree. We uh, search for exhibitions, search for conferences to present uh, the new development um, in CAN-based uh, can protocols. We also do on behalf of our member exhibit um, their products partially and promote uh, new technologies in these exhibitions. We do publication in different language and uh, recently we have certain marketing group, um, especially one as you see, is also related to promote can open lift groups. Well, there are a few slides, then we come uh, straight to the point of today's webinar. This is still an introduction. I would want to give you some uh, overview. If you have not been in touch with Canon Automation, then this slide would actually give you an opportunity to learn what we do actually. Additionally, what could we offer to you in various aspects of development and promoting of uh, your device uh, uh, or application. So base our um, basic uh, task is actually development of specifications. So if you just develop them, nobody will know what we do. So beyond our members, um, but they have to learn where uh, what is going on there. 
So we have some number of printed media, which we promote this information, what new technologies are available, what are changes in specification, what are new profiles or existing profiles, which um, developers would be interested in. So we present it in conferences and uh, also in international special CAN conference and industrial conferences. Beyond this, we offer on a technical point of view, um, consultancy to the application uh, designers. How do they, uh, can they do this? Also our members provide such services. We do just information, assist uh, where to go from the starting specification. Uh, for example, how can we test it and who will test it? This is information we offer for system designers. For device designers, on the other hand, we offer conformance, can open conformance testing for their can open devices to assure that at least protocol based communication works. On the other half, we offer marketing information, as was said before. Uh, in a form of product guides where list the advertisements of many companies and you know, okay, so these uh, devices or even application are available and um, certain supplementary devices such as monitor device, can open hardware and protocol stacks are where they are available and where you get them actually there. Beyond that, there are also brochures you can learn about certain application or device profiles we design. And so you can up, come up to us or know where to look for uh, your required um, things. The only couple more slides. Uh, we have a email service to our member, a non-member, informal member news, which you could subscribe for. You could follow up us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn to learn about what is new at CAN Automation, what is going on with CAN-based protocols. We also have a number of websites where we provide additional further knowledge base information and information on our activities, such as webinars, seminars, and uh, technical days, which uh, in this year will still remain online activities. And you can find for this information on our main page, canyonautomation.org. Product guide I mentioned before, there is also a separate page for that. And for the new recent information, what is going on in there, you can find in Ken newsletter. So I think this is uh, almost um, done. Uh, as far as uh, you are interested in, so as I mentioned before, can open can automation is a actually membership based organization. There are certain advantages for the member, so you get um, reduced number um, of prices for certain um, things such as testing. You have an access to every specification we design and you could actively participate in the development uh, of the specification we design. And beyond that, uh, you can uh, provide your um, requirements or we could work them into the specification. On the other hand, on your behalf, we can push your products on or search for certain CAN markets for you as well. That's it about this short, uh, well, not that short introduction, but uh, this is partially a marketing um, event of ours. We want to um, make you um, um, interested uh, to make you um, um, understand what you actually, if you develop, uh, want to try to develop this, that there is, uh, there are certain uh, things, there are certain uh, companies um, which offer already products and full support and even uh, informative uh, support for that. This is what we actually want to show you with this couple of slides. 
Now we go straight to the point can open leaf profile. So uh, just to tell you exactly with uh, the in the working group um, SIG uh, lift can open lift. We developed together with more than 30 companies uh, which uh, develop um, can open leaf components, host controllers, drives, whatever mention you need in a network. We designed a specification is about uh, 15 years, maybe even more as it is existing and is constantly maintained and extended for new functionality. So means the interest uh, rem not only remains, but uh, constantly evolves. These um, leaf control systems are constantly evolves, especially with regard to can open um, data interface. So specification 417 that we develop is can open application leaf profile. It contains from uh, of the four parts uh, where we describe basic definitions of can open, which you could find in base can open specification 301. But here is with regard to uh, lift specifics, such as um, what are the services, communication services we need there for uh, such a thing like the complete lift application you learn in later if you don't know by now, how much of this uh, is in there. There is so-called virtual device definition for every lift component. So in the next slide, I will uh, clarify what we understand under uh, behind a uh, virtual device and what is this for? Part three is communication model, which defines communication protocols and communication data for configuration of the lift, the whole lift application. And finally, we have part four, we have a detailed list of parameters used to store data uh, to store specific functionalities, indications, uh, control words, status of the certain components in the lift. So it's basically this whole thing is a software and you uh, program this software into the hardware. There are um, several companies on the market which offer already protocol stack not only general can open protocol stack, but specific one for the lift. There is also a lift group uh, beyond um, Canon Automation Working Group, which actually maintains a website. This is uh, actually the chairman of the current Canon Automation Lift Group, Mr. Jörg Helmich. He also maintains website where he provides additional information more um, device and application specific. It is not affiliated with us, but it will give you certain hints what is going on uh, worldwide uh, additionally in the lift, what kind of specific devices are existing. Our side, on our side, we provide specification and could give you an information what is going on with the working group what you do need to develop the device, uh, the basic specification. And as I said, our members also um, specialized in design of the applications, devices and applications could assist you with that. They have certain services for that. So we don't want to get in um, um, concurrency to, to, the, to them. Uh, so we just uh, provide information about specification and give a certain hint where you can find, um, for example, protocol stacks where you could find um, someone who could help you further with development of this. And what is this all about? Can open how the things are working to the certain degree. Uh, the least but not last is actually implementation and user guideline. We designed additionally uh, CR4 uh, 
814 uh, specification, which will be extended for the further parts of it in the future. For now, we have an application bootloader, which is specified in there, but it has uh, very special details on that. We'll concentrate ourselves on a 417 specification and not only on specification, we talk about what is Lyft profile actually uh, all about, what is actually inside, what are the concepts in there. Application profiles. So uh, when you design um, devices, can open device, there are three distinct ways to do things. Um, you can do design generic device, which means this is only one of this kind in the world. That gives you an opportunity to embed it into your system, but it will be difficult to configure this device um, and configure if purchasing such devices from different manufacturers to configure them together because Kinopen is very flexible but could contain almost uh, incompatible settings, which is why this one wouldn't be suitable for the whole application where everything should be actually already known up to the degree of exchangeability. The second one will be device profiles, which we also have um, in can automation. The concept of device profiles that we offer in this case, standardized data can open data interface and communication for a certain class of devices, such as every encoder or every drive control of different manufacturers have the very same standardized features, standardized communication and standardized data in there. Additionally, manufacturer could add their manufacturer specific data, but the one part remains the same this means these devices can be actually used um, in a kind of application. However, there is still um, a drawback in a device profile. You do have no um, configuration yet in there. So the device have to be configured and may not be actually satisfy certain uh, requirements, which is which are coming from the whole application, like an open lift. For example, there could be special kind of encoders which need only very certain information and can open a device profile for encoders. There is one. Uh, that is for generic kind of encoders, for every kind of encoders. So, but we need a specific kind of encoder. This means that would not be also entirely suitable. However, we did our best. We designed certain devices which could fit into every any application. But there are very uh, little number of these devices because every application has its own requirements. So, I will go next. So application profiles. This is the third one, a most reliable if we talk about application itself. So the devices designed based on it are fitted to very certain applications. This means everything is pre-configured. You have the device type, for example, as you can see here, device type, there's a certain can in automation, can, uh, can open, uh, parameter, application parameter, uh, communication parameter, which uniquely identifies each single device. Just to get this abstractly, let's say this is a lift drive or lift car door uh, controller or lift um, a load measurement unit or um, whatever other component of the lift is in there. This is object indicates this will go into details what exact information uh, is the, in there and is helpful. Additionally, the object 1029 would be uh, is an important one. However, this is a certain number of 
parameters which are mandatory in KinOpen in general and optional otherwise, this object 1029 is optional, 1000, uh, the object 1000 is mandatory. This makes sense, of course, that every device is provided with a certain information and it's always in there. 1029 offers actually um, error behavior maintaining uh, throughout uh, the object, uh, throughout this very certain device um, in general. And all devices in an in open network could provide this information by reading this information, you know what is going on in a device, how should it behave itself in case of error. Should the complete network go down or remain in a current operating state, just wait for inputs. This is why it is important. It's especially object which is related for the application. Beyond that, we have PDO communication mapping parameter. If you don't know what PDO, I would refer you to base specification 301. And in short, I would say you would like to communicate over CAN media. You would like to communicate process data but you have to configure this data, um, how this should be uh, sent or received by each device and what are, is the data in there. And this is all designed in so-called PDO communication mapping parameters. There are application specific data types, which is um, not that important in this uh, uh, webinar overview. Um, we have standardized application objects, uh, application parameters, where you know what this means. Actually, this control word to start the drive, the indication if this everything is going on, status of this, what are the current um, position value of the car drive, uh, of the cabin, what is current situation with the uh, doors, are, are they open and so on. This information is provided in standardized application objects. They are unified throughout every single device as this application profile. So if you find this in any device, you exactly know what this information means, what is inside. Beyond that, if you need very complex devices, which uh, may require kind of application, um, um, kind of application um, uh, operating system, because it has plenty of the tasks, you would require state machines. This is also an additional optional in uh, 417. You could design it or may leave it out. So, so far about can open application profile in general, what this application profile means, then we'll go into details. What is the lift itself? Well, uh, this is typical um, picture of what uh, in totally it could be. Uh, there are certain build, uh, kind of, uh, there are buildings everywhere and there are buildings, many uh, stores, many floors and you couldn't reach them without any kind of elevator. So um, there are existing applications, lift application profiles, which use uh, various um, um, communication ways, uh, various communication uh, lines and so on. In CanOpen, we just say, CanOpen is a software, it is application, and each single component in the lift application communicate over CAN network, transmit the CAN data. For the application itself, we could design, we have designed actually up to um, eight single lift applications, which means there could be uh, only one lift inside and there could be up to 254 floors. Well, realistically, uh, this is possible, but uh, there are never too ma so many uh, typical buildings, 10 to 15 floors maximum, but even three or five or so on. But 
You never know. The application is allowed so, but based actually on certain limitations, the communication speed is about 250 maximum uh, kilobit per second. For can open communication, it's a scan based communication, we have a certain uh, relationship between bit rate of the communicated data and the length of the communication line. So for 250, it is 250 meters. Beyond the case uh, that there are only few floors, it is impossible that all eight applications could hang, uh, hang on 250 meters. Um, more obviously, the length of the line would be much larger, much bigger. To overcome this limitation, the whole lift network with all eight applications, or even in lift one application, 250 meters may be not enough, it could be 500 meters. So you have to segment the network by using gateways or bridges. But the point is on the can open level, this is application layer, higher application layer for can in this, can open lift. The data you send should not be bothered by there. So every component should get send and receive its data through these gateways between the segments without any actually specific uh, configuration and issues. This is a tricky part how to do so. If you put this in a network, the, you need to um, see how these things with limited number of can IDs, limited number of um, can messages you could transmit uh, process data called process uh, yeah called process data. How can we do this in a whole up uh, large architecture which would consist the maximum number of um, uh, <coughs> of single applications up to eight and two hundred fifty four floors. How to do this? We could first start with what we go uh, back down uh, to the very uh, um, atomic part of this. This is actually um, a functionality. You could imagine this is an um, example of the leaf control system. And this is uh, what we do um, actually in there. Um, there could be single shaft, maybe even multiple shaft, but we want to do have uh, show the very uh, small example. So you see this overview of can network, or rather say can open network inside. There is various uh, components, so-called lift components you see here, like uh, drive controller on the uh, top. Uh, door controller, call controller who receives the uh, push, it, uh, push, uh, push button call from the user and process it and sends the elevator down there. There is a panel controller for input panel inside of the uh, elevator or maybe outside on the floor. There's again door controller which operates uh, the doors of the cabin. There's drive control who moves the elevator. There are certain other components like sensor unit, load measuring panel in and out, which are, is here for lights in a switch turning on uh, and off the lights in the elevator. There is a car door unit, so not controller car door unit on the left side. There is a car panel, car display store. They are actually all the functions which are offered by lift in lift application, which are necessary. So there are two ways to uh, implement them. Either the single physical component or a combined component, which may include several functionality. Having done this combined into uh, one single 
component, which offers four functionality, like you see at, above in a, a violet color, or down there with card or unit or light barrier together, that should be a certain concept come into to allow map of can open parameters for such an application when I do have either functionality separate or all functionalities bundled, bundled together. So we call the functionality for simplicity virtual devices. So I not they could be actually existing like this, like push button, car door, car display is physical, but they may contain also several further functionality in one uh, box, which allowed actually beyond this uh, for various reasons, economic, advantages that we have only one hardware, which um, only in one hardware, we have multiple functionalities um, regarding this whole stuff like panel input and outputs. Or in car door case, there will be also monitoring if anybody put the finger or hand or foot into the between the doors so to prevent the door closed this every physical can open device can contain also this virtual functionality in there the most important thing of course is how to communicate between these functionality not the physical device the functionality inside like the panel input and that is uh, why can communication comes handy. We have a producer and consumer in each uh, of each these virtual devices. And every of these device can be a producer of the message or the consumer. Or in one device, it can be actually producing device and in another device like a car display uh, and so on, it could be uh, a consumer of the data coming through the bus from whenever device is there. So to do so, for every virtual device, we actually need some kind of identification to distinguish between all these functionality, especially if they are in only one device. However, we leave this opportunity if you want to have uh, one physical device corresponding exactly to one um, uh, virtual device. So one physical device contains only one virtual device. In this case, you will see the virtual device codes, which are single device codes from one to um, for the <coughs> virtual codes, so the actual information is, uh, I'll be updated this soon because we have some more devices already in there. So device like call controller could be a single device in there. Virtual device will be equal to the physical device. However, as I shown this before, in this yellow, uh, in this um, violet uh, box, up there, we have up to four virtual devices. To do so, we actually need to activate virtual device number zero, which indicates we have multiple virtual devices. So, and then we have a place or a parameter where we can specify which are the single codes for this identification. For the first, we have a device type object, device type parameter, object 1000. It exists in every device, no matter if it's virtual or physical device. Basically, it is related to the physical device. But we have a, uh, to have a kind of pendant of it for each single virtual device. This will be in an open application profile 417, object 6000. So what do we have in there? So object 1000 consists of two parts, identification first that is lift profile 417. And in the upper 
16 bit, this uh, 32 bit um, parameter, it indicates this, what I said above virtual device code. Uh, well, uh, virtual device code. Um, we could put uh, value zero in there, meaning that we actually have multiple devices. We could look for this information in the object 6000 then. Here you see listed up to 254 devices, virtual devices that could be supported in one physical device. So this whole stuff um, is, is a little bit more complex than this only because uh, we have to segment our network. Even uh, due to this length, we need several segments, several networks because um, at the worst case scenario, we could have all virtual devices equal to physical devices. Then we have uh, plenty of devices in the same network. And we have to manage, to manage them. How do we access them? And where are we looking for the parameters in there? So there is an open object dictionary contains all the parameters application, communication, manufacturer specific, whatever you uh, need in there. For the standardized application parameter, which are available for every device, uh, they, they are standardized through the whole application profile. So you can use um, any of these parameters in your very specific devices, but not only any, to make it uh, sense, actually, we have pressed the whole application in a very limited range. However, it's not that limited. It contains uh, basically a couple of thousands of objects in there, a couple of thousand parameters in there. So in each single range. But because of this segmentation, this means that I would operate with a gateway. So I need to have my uh, parameters to be transparent between the gateway system. So to make it happen, I would not uh, do this uh, distribute in the whole um, object dictionary range for application parameter that will be 6,000 uh, to 900, 9,000 FFF, but I would restrict to the limited number. So you could certainly distinguish. I know, okay, we talk about lift application one and there is their parameter. So this would be effectively help you out to uh, keep your um, range of parameters. And in there, you can see on the left side, this actually the range, total range of application parameters for one single application. Maximum, there could be eight applications, but one single has its own parameters. And within this small range for each one, you have the ranges also for each virtual device. So basically I could do um, although this is uh, uh, purely theoretical, you could put all virtual devices into one, but that would defy, of course, it is possible, but that could defy actually a distributed embedded system uh, design in there. But this is possible, but it's not the, the point in there. Uh, the point is that I have very separate ranges where I maintain only very specific um, virtual device functionality. And I pretty exactly know if I get this information, where should I look for these parameters? So how does it help me? So we have this uh, segmentation into several networks, which means between two networks, if I transmit the data, this is transparent, but I have various different components into these different networks. And I have no way of knowing how these components um, actually, whether they are located in the other network. 
For this case, you need two object dictionaries. One is for a network one, can open network one, one for can open network two. And this object dictionary translate the um, information coming from the can messages transmitting from each single device. And this each single device has the data exactly as in 417 specification back from exactly these ranges. So, for example, uh, panel input unit has an object 6100 from Canopa Network 1. If it goes, it may not reach its destination because um, in Canopa uh, Network 2, there are different other devices which would consume this information. So I need an object dictionary which translates me the information from this one network into object dictionary of another network. And this is how the things are working. But this information is just simple because I don't need to configure anything else. My message is in itself is the same. So uh, additional opportunity uh, possibilities here, if you access can open network from uh, some proprietary networks. There is also the data is uh, transferred in there and such a gateway could locate the uh, image of each of the device in this proprietary network and has a conversion table for the PDOs or not for PDOs also for object dictionaries of those devices and allow to map them into this uh, can open network. Can open communication model for can open lift is, as we said, uh, there is can open one, can open lift uh, application one. It has a full range. The same applies for uh, process data objects. We have um, a process data object transmitted over the network. But in the device, we define if this process data is received by the device or transmitted by this device. Transmitted calls TPDO, transmit TPDO, and received um, is uh, what is received. So this is purely configuration in the device. On the CAN network, you see only PDO. So we have 500 PDOs totally. And it will be, of course, a little bit difficult to keep up with this uh, because we have a limited number of total PDOs available for the whole network. So we have to come to this certain uh, degree of understanding. And each single device, as you can see, they have various node ID. So which means uh, each device identification where I could find the pure physical device identification that I know exactly in can open lift. And each um, device can have up to 127 receive messages and one a transmit message. So if I have though, um, I have limited number of PDOs for the all eight possible applications, 240 to uh, 54 floors. I have only 512. So I have to split them wisely to give uh, have a covered all the process that I would like to transmit and also offer some manufacturer specific uh, PDO for and some PDOs reserved for every future extension we have. This is a scheme for that. As you can see for lift one, we have a limited number of PDOs available, PDO 257 to PDO 272, but is uh, sufficient for every virtual device information submitted within this small network or even within a, between the segments. So as you can see on the right side, how lift application one, what are the PDOs that can be used in uh, for various uh, purposes. 
That is not all actually. Um, if we have a kind of uh, transmission matrix in their communication matrix where we assigned uh, messages based on their identifier to make a uh, linking between various devices to say which device transmit this message and which device received this message. The first table above actually delivers information about the PDO kind in the configured in the device, other device receives or transmits this PDO. And below table shows you what are the data. It's just um, an example. So the position unit actually in a message one, the car position unit provides this information to the car drive unit and a car drive unit drives to that position received with the data uh, from car position unit. And car drive unit informs, for example, car drive controller about this, uh, uh, the car position unit informs the car drive controller uh, about this one. And car, sorry, and car drive controller, which you can see above here, uh, command um, orders to car drive unit to move um, based on this information to the certain position. This is how it is done. So to make this simple, these uh, PDOs are arranged by the identifier and they are used by various um, entities, various virtual devices. So we have complete linking of the data. This means I don't need each single um, PDO with each single message for transmitting the data uh, for each virtual device. So I save it and I do completely um, interconnect my virtual device functionality in there by this means. We're still not finished with the concept of this cars, but after there, there come um, just the additional features, but this is a point to discuss later. So we saw the PGOs um, actually completely arranged for complete application. You can find these PGOs in part three of uh, CF417. Well, that was all basic concepts, how this PDO communication, how do we segment the networks, how we use the uh, gateways uh, with uh, various object dictionaries or, or the, only with one, and how the data goes transparent with same PDO into another network, just uh, adjusting its uh, object dictionary, fitting into the, uh, another network and so on. For details, you could ask uh, us for that. We could um, point you further if the information will be required uh, assistance of some companies who are deep knowledge of this development, such as can open lift community. And beyond that, uh, our questions to the specification, you could ask anytime. Well, to summarize uh, these um, activities in there, we offer some um, testing possibility opportunities for that, which are not actually take place because we have a COVID-19 uh, pandemic and face-to-face -face meeting will be uh, difficult. Um, making this um, through uh, online channels um, seems to be a kind of difficult, but we may come up with a concept if pandemic takes a longer time and people would like to have, uh, companies would like to have it um, done interoperability testing. For the reason of this, um, can open conformance testing makes only sense for the configured devices only to say um, this is uh, to a certain degree can open conform, nothing more. Can open conformance test test unconfigured devices. Um, can open lift devices, however, pre-configured for an application. So it will be difficult to do so, but still you can do this. This is not mandatory conformance testing. 
what is actually far more interesting this block fest which are not taking place or um, calling this uh, data interoperability testing between the components as you see from this nice picture that every component understand each other and receives the commands from host controller and operates uh, partially on its own and can even intercommunicate with other devices without having access the host control itself. This is the distributed embedded system. The testing of it, how does it operate in a network makes the full sense in that. You can check out how uh, all devices send the process data, how this is received, if this uh, information is timely received. An additional functionality is actually an additional point is you see if the functional functional operation in this network works. For example, positioning of the lift. Does it work if I connect device of various manufacturers together? That uh, has to be working even practically. However, there are certain degrees of flexibility, some manufacturer specific uh, implementation, which are allowed within an open lift, which makes necessary to fit uh, every single uh, devices into the network uh, in a special, uh, special way. You have to fit to have check out what are the certain restrictions, how does this operates with a has compatibilities with a control device, host controller. Uh, beyond that, um, this um, interoperability is actually given to the certain degree by the uh, 417 profile itself. Still, as I said, KinOpen is very flexible. There are certain even application, standardized application related functionality, which may be designed manufacturer specifically to a certain degree would require actually looking into this and see uh, if the configuration properties should be fitted a little bit more. So uh, beyond can open lift application, the design of the devices, you can design your device, you can uh, join can automation and participate in this working group and actively bring your requirements into the development of the specification. If you need some additional functions to discuss in the group, how to, how to put uh, this function and make it available for every manufacturer of this kind of functionality in there. You're welcome to contact on this uh, to us, contact, uh, contact me. Uh, we could discuss how we could do so. Well, additional functionality. We went beyond uh, the simple device um, development for can open lift components. Uh, we have already implemented and um, many devices already have supporting condition monitoring. We go in short uh, overview how this uh, does work in can open lift. So every device in can open lift can submit condition monitoring data. This could be also a centralized station which collects this data. There could be other host controller, or this could be manufacturer specific condition monitoring device which collects this data and put this into give um, this uh, to the other networks, <coughs> not necessary embedded can open network, but maybe over TCP IP to IoT based internet based provider services over the cloud to uh, some networks where this data is processed. There is IoT gateway which we did independently from can open lift which could be used in there. Generic 1395 uh, uh, and IoT based uh, is 309-5. And we have an also our uh, application bootloader allows to make a device, which is actually nothing yet, uh, but we load uh, with a bootloader. It, the device could support generic functionality. 
I use in bootloader, I can upload the firmware, uh, which makes this device uh, having certain functionality like IO panel, like uh, encoder, if I do have actually encoder functionality in the device, but I need this specific functionality only for lift. This could be done all by bootloader. Bootloader is specified also in 417 and implementation guideline is in specification 418. Uh, 814. So, uh, can open lift monitoring um, all aspects of um, monitoring actually designed already in there? You're welcome to look into uh, 417 for these concepts. There are main maintenance um, and monitoring functionality supported. We have identification of our network, identification of the devices. Uh, it is done a little bit differently than we do identification for pure can open lift components, but this is related for condition monitoring. So where do we locate this functionality? And this is we um, come uh, to, um, learn that there is already field bus neutral process architecture, especially suited for pushing the sensor data or condition monitoring data into the network in a very certain manner. So this architecture is standardized in VDMA 2045A2. So we take a standardized solution, let's say, and apply it to our condition monitoring which gives you an opportunity to have it um, purchasing the solution from the shelf. And the solution for designing this system also from the shelf, which embeds a uh, concept of this VDMA, VDMA um, specification. Um, the concept is actually based on um, a box with inputs and outputs where I provide system state and the process state information and indicate uh, the kind of mode is used in there, especially for condition monitoring, for monitoring or maintenance, and could indicate the current status of the device uh, with the status lights or the status of the data itself, uh, so many things could contain input data, system state. And the whole concept of this allows to uh, having certain structures, standardized structures, allowing uh, to the final, final step to push the certain condition monitoring data in a, a structured way that you know actually uh, what is going on with this component do I need to replace it? Do I need to maintain it? Uh, what is this current condition? Uh, do I need to do any action on it? This is what we have um, applied to the can open application concept. There are certain range of parameters valid for every virtual device in a very structured matter, but they will be actually due to lack of time uh, um, a uh, point of discussion and um, topic for our uh, next webinar or additional webinar. I could refer you to um, our already existing tech days on YouTube, where we have described uh, more in details on the lift application. Um, the concept, if you want to know a little bit more about this, I would um, kindly ask you to contact me on this matter. So anyways, the concept is working, uh, is operational, and we use um, first transmit video of every single virtual device. It transmits this condition monitoring data. How does it look with condition monitoring? As I said previously, there could be different concepts. We have the whole uh, lift network having, for example, here two segments, which are splitted by host controller. 
it may yeah, exactly it may have a two networks but doesn't matter the pdos flow in all directions the data processor flows in all directions also between the devices and uh, central central place is a host controller and every single device and every virtual functionality in this device if they are not uh, equal so if a physical device has multiple virtual device every virtual functionality submits condition monitoring data in very structured in very same way however the data is of course different because the device provides <coughs> various uh, points for example position limit or the current limitation is reached something like this but the structure is always the same submit status of the state submit um, uh, current uh, process data on this and uh, the decision will be made of the, the component uh, should remain uh, or should be maintained. There is a green marked um, blocks. Actually, they are physical devices, which in case of condition monitoring, it could be also a virtual device equal physical device or maybe some other devices, virtual devices are in there. Anyways, this is a way to push this information into cloud using some proprietary networks. Without standardized can open solution with TCP IP gateway, which I mentioned before, this is 309. Uh, so now you see in a can open lift network, you have two opportunities. You could do this a proprietary or standardized solution and submit this data in there. The short overview of bootloader, what it is uh, actually based upon, we have a specification, uh, generic specification for bootloader. Um, uh, basic concepts, but the bootloader is always application specific. This is why uh, for the uh, 302 uh, lift bootloader, but it's always 417 bootloader. Every can open application or device profile with its needs bootloader has to do this uh, in a very specific way. So it's can open dictionary is very limited in a bootloader itself, but it could load the data. It's uh, necessary only to uh, load the uh, firmware into the device after which uh, the device becomes the object dictionary, full object dictionary of the very certain profile. There could be 417 IO module, uh, input panel, whatever it is, um, virtual device um, and several virtual devices. You could do this, everything load with a bootloader. For details, please refer 417 um, and the implementation guideline is provided in 814. So far about this uh, few function, additional functionalities available there. We are a little bit over the time, but hope you excuse it uh, for now because I had to go in some details to certain points. Um, now uh, the group itself, a short overview of the future uh, offers uh, in a working group for Lyft, um, the community is not that uh, yet uh, ready uh, to go um, to the new technology because uh, why should we do this? Because this work works very fine. However, there are certain limitations which could be helped by using this new technology called Connecti. There are certain limitations, but for now we leave it as it is. I just give you a short overview what it can offer. Uh, Robert Bosch developed CanFD, new CAN-based protocol, and it offers two significant advantages where only one advantage actually makes uh, uh, a bigger, um, gives a bigger advantage than the other. This is payload. <coughs> the data, data field is actually 64 bytes. Here is a little bit wrong, uh, 63, totally 64 bytes. 
In contrary to can based, there's only eight bytes possible. So with this one, I could uh, transmit enormous number of messages. And a, se a second significant one, but less significant than the payload, is the bit rate. It could be go be uh, beyond the um, can based bit rate of one megabit to four megabit, even higher. I could switch also bit rates within that, which allows me effectively go the same way as can uh, can information goes, the same bit rate up to <coughs> one megabit, but for lift is is two hundred four fifty kilobits. This means actually two hundred four fifty kilobits could be also done with CanFD, even without bit switching. The only reason, the only point, the only advantage is there that the much higher payload, 64, eight times bigger, 64 bytes of data could be transmitted. The question is how can I use it? With PDO, it would mean actually completely redesign a can open lift application, which makes actually sense, but would defy actually the idea of backwards compatibility or would require much more effort. It should be done carefully. For now, it could be just uh, completely identical to um, can open based to can based, having transmitted a higher, a bigger payload with some additional information, which was not possible before, but without sacrificing the, sorry, currently available uh, process data structure. What is quite more interesting is universal STO. This is a thing which is available in already designed can open FT protocol specification. But 417 remains for now can open based. So this universal STO doesn't exist in can open, offers significant advantages over it. First of all, I don't require um, many identifiers. Uh, I don't require to configure uh, to configure my identifier in the network. I always send the message as a client ask uh, in a device for the data, either download or upload in there using my own node ID. This significantly reduce configuration uh, uh, efforts for the channels, as we know it from uh, STO in CanOpen. The second biggest advantage is actually that the data is transmitted not only point to point as unicast, or can be transmitted to many or broadcast this data. And it could be received by many devices in broadcast. Imagine this, we are closing to the PDO transmission we said previously there is there are there is a limitation. Uh, currently, we have a couple of more PDOs available uh, with eight bytes uh, data each. But a certain time uh, in the future will be also covered. Uh, so we need some additional <coughs> possibility to do so. And this USTO protocol, due to its broadcast and multicast transmission and reception would come handy because even having uh, the same bit rate, transmit more data at once and the devices could receive it. There could be also parallel access to the very same server, which means I don't need to establish uh, to configure uh, several channels within a device. It is done always in the biggest, bigger data field which uh, formerly used only for data content mostly. Uh, but with USTO, I push this configuration in the data itself, giving me um, a big advantage over configuration effort in this network. There is a routing capability, which is also more important things. And some other concept we discussed before with the transparent gateways and so on, Suddenly we have net ID, which allows me to indicate uh, where my uh, data actually belongs to. Uh, 
uh, we said we have to segment the data because 250 meters wouldn't be enough even in same uh, in one small relatively small networks um, the total number of uh, total length could be bigger so i split my network into two this is where net id comes handy in my message i said is uh, the information for the <coughs> sorry network one or a network two see this is quite an interesting advantage there are only a few slides i would like to mention then we um uh, finish thing for today this is the structure how USDO works. Uh, the specification you could find this is uh, 1301. Uh, again, this is not used in, in uh, Lyft, but demo is used currently. We develop um, uh, some device profiles like IO modules and drive profiles. We're already using them in there. And that should list you in details of what are the advantages of configuration advantages when the configuration, everything is pushed in there. And alone by my message, I can pretty know where uh, this message is addressed to and it could send it in broadcast. I could also submit my message throughout the transparent, truly transparent gateways without changing the object dictionary in there without needing several object dictionaries in there by just having destination address and destination network ID <coughs> in there. So simply wrote the message in there and it is uh, reach my device. See, there are certain advantages beyond this. We have some security and um, function sa safety functional safety concepts, which are providing hardware and software. We are currently working on it. Some solutions already provided in there, but the generic solution for knft based network is not yet uh, uh, here. It is currently in development. If you're also interested in there, you're welcome to contact us on that. So I'm finished actually for today with this um, presentation. It, um, brief introduction into can open lift profile. If you have any questions, you could also write down um, to us, especially at service can see uh, .org. You can call us um, if you wish, uh, but uh, for now, in times of um, pandemic, is preferable way to do this by email. Um, thank you for being here. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.